Get ready to match the stars. Orson Bean, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Riley, Pat Finley, Richard Dawson, and Joyce Villafont as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 75. And now here's the star of Match Game 75, Gene Raver. Every time you come out, it rains. Blue cards. Do you know why Orson does that? Why does Orson do that? I told him you had to clean up. And ever since I told him that, he just keeps throwing those things. Getting rather messy here. Try to remember the kind of numbers. you ready? Of course I'm You ready? For what? Ready? Never. Oh, all right. Well, we're going to start without you. Let's say hello to our two players, Barbara Beebe and Tommy Sanger. Ladies. Barbara's our current champion. She has won $2,850, and I know that brings a little joy to her. What are you going to do with that money? Um, did you ever wish you had enough money to do some real special things for special people? Yes. And that's what I'm going to do. Am I special to you, Barbara? Well, <laughs> <laughs> hmm? Not yet, oh. but keep trying. Okay. <laughs> All right. And she's being challenged now by Tommy Sanger, and we found out a little bit about her. She's from North Dakota. And she's a student who is studying marketing. What year are you in school, Tommy? I'm a junior, senior. Junior. Uh, what kind of courses do you get in a marketing thing? Economics and... Economics. Um, you take corporate finance, accounting... Corporate finance. I knew him well. <laughs> marketing okay. consists of how not to squeeze the Charmin. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, we'll start this game right after we start this message for you. Ready, here we go. Round one coming up. Tommy, it's your choice, A or B, if you please. B, please. B it is. Everybody plays new game. Mm. Yes. Oh. On the Titanic, oh. Agnes said, I'm never taking this steamship again. Here we are sinking, and the captain is up on deck, blanking. It's a first round, wide open question, whatever yeah, comes I to your little mind. We're all I stumped. <laughs> I had several. I was just trying to make up my mind. Could you read it again? Maybe it'll That's good. Idea. That's a very good answer. On the Titanic, Agnes said, I'm never taking this steamship again. Here we are sinking and the captain is up on deck blanking. I don't know. Da -da 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 -da. Can I say this? <laughs> okay. Can I say that? Sure, if you want to say that. It's okay. up to you. All right. Threes. Yeah, just put it in a slot, Joyce. Don't be tentative or hesitant about that. Tommy Singer. On the Titanic, Agnes said, I'm never taking this steamship again. Here we are sinking, and the captain is up on deck blanking. Drinking? Drinking. <laughs> Not a bad eh? He's up there uh, taking a belt or two. What'd you say, Ors? I had him up there singing, Near of my God to thee. Singing. <laughs> That's indeed. That's very good. That's what they did on that, uh, yes. What happens when you have one too many? Well, you fall on your face, <laughs> oh, yes, as you well saying. know. <laughs> Should all, all the acquaintances be forgotten? <laughs> there yes, okay, two singers. Well, what did they hit? They hit an iceberg. I said he was up there making ice cubes. <laughs> <laughs> making ice cubes. What did you say, Pat? Well... I don't even, I don't even really want to explain it. I don't want to show it. Uh, Come on, show it. hope not. Barfing. Barfing. <laughs> well, then he got seasick. You know how it is. It was a traumatic experience for him, and he just said, oh, I'm going to go away. Well, all right, Richard, here we are. Are you on a network show? <laughs> yes, I was. It's the Bob Newhart show. <laughs> well, I'll drink to that. I'll drink to that. Okay. Now, Tommy Singer. Here we are sinking, and the captain is up on deck drinking, according to Tommy. What do you say? Well, it's because of Orson I said this. I said he was getting tattooed. <laughs> <laughs> getting tattooed? <laughs> I understand your you answer, Joyce. Right? I think what he, that's a wonderful thank answer. You. What he was I really doing was... Uh, best answers. He was, what was he doing, Orson? He, he was kissing the first mate. I didn't want to go... <laughs> no, he wasn't. 
Okay, your first round question, Barbara, reads as follows. Frugal Phyllis finds a use for everything. Last year, she took her old steel wool and knitted a blank. <laughs> oh, dear. Took her old steel wool and knitted a blank. <coughs> took her old steel wool, you see. Yes. I got her knitting needles out and knitted a blank. Okay, put that in the slot. Okay. Everybody's ready, so we'll call on Barbara. Frugal Phyllis finds a use for everything. Last year, she took her old steel wool and knitted a blank. A sweater. Really? <laughs> some do and some don't. I don't know what you'd make out of old steel wool. Orson, what do you make out of old steel wool? Well, Frugal Phyllis had been frugal for many years and had saved up a lot of steel wool. What did she make? Who, who did she have steel wool? She <laughs> knitted a stove. A stove? There's a good answer. You've got a lot of steel wool, you knit yourself a stove. Good. All right, Brett. Oh, no, she knit herself a girdle and just scratched herself to death. <laughs> Well, that'd hold it in, wouldn't it? Make <laughs> <laughs> so nervous. Charles? She was going with a rugged guy. Yeah. What was his name? Chuck. <laughs> Chuck. And she knitted him a suit of armor. Oh. A suit of armor. You could do that with steel. What do you say, Pat? Well, after Orson's last answer, I don't feel bad about anything. What do you say? She knitted a cap. That's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so disappointed in your past. Richard. What was the question again? Uh, frugal Phyllis finds use for everything. Last year, she took her all her old steel wool and knitted a blank. And, well, she uh, was actually uh, frugal in more ways than one. <coughs> yes, she was. And she knitted herself a chastity belt. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful woman, yes. One could do that if one had enough metal, of course. She had a little yes. left over and she knitted herself a number of keys and passed them around. <laughs> Joyce, what do you say? She was dating the Godfather and she knitted herself a bulletproof vest. That's what you say. <laughs> oh, nice. So at the end of round one, it's one and nothing in favor of our challenger, Tommy. Round two coming up in a moment or so, but first this. Ready, round two coming up, as I promised. Here it is, Tommy. B, please. B. Now, let's see, you matched one person, Richard, last round, and uh, you lay out, Richard, okay? <laughs> the rest of you pay attention to this. Right. Inflation has finally hit. <laughs> May your house be free from tigers. <laughs> Inflation has finally hit fairyland. Oh. <laughs> Can I play? No. <laughs> Times are so bad that the little old lady who lived in a shoe just had to move into a blank. That's how bad it is in fairyland. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. You got the idea. The little lady who lived in a shoe just had to move into a blank. Did you hear all of that, Tommy? Yes, I did. You think about it while they're finishing up. They're ready. Charles, we can't wait forever. Joyce, you're not finished either. I know it. I know it. The little old lady who lived in a shoe had to move into a blank because inflation hit fairyland. <laughs> all right. Don't ask her. <laughs> okay. Just don't ask her. Now, Tommy, yes. inflation has finally hit fairyland. Times are so bad that the little old lady who lived in a shoe, just had to move into a... Sandal? A sandal. Good. That's very good because presumably a sandal is smaller than a shoe. That's yes. very good thinking on Tommy's part. A sandal is the little old lady from the shoe's summer home. Oh, the summer home. Yes, oh. however, in the winter, she poor thing has to live in a sneaker. In a sneaker. That's good. This is a sandal and there's no way. <laughs> <laughs> Warn people before you do that. <laughs> Smelling 
assaults, medic first aid. Don't do that. We're only we're only funny. Oh. You. It, you know, the last time she did that on a nighttime show, we lost two panelists. <laughs> man who has sat beside me for two years without shoes and clothes, I mean, without socks and closed shoes. Do you know what happens? Yes, I know what happens. I don't I want to hear about it. I spent my life in tears up <laughs> here. Sneaker. Sneaker. So we have two pairs of sneakers so far. What do you offer, Charles? She's looking for the answer, sandal. All right. I understand we're pushed for time. Now, when you live in a, what is the cheapest place you can move into as a house? As a house. A tent. A tent. A tent is made of? Canvas. canvas. And a sneaker is also made of canvas. Okay, so there's logic to that. Three pairs of sneakers so far, and uh, no sandals. You give this little lady a sandal, would you? No, I'm terribly sorry, but I'll give her a shoebox. A shoebox. So far, no sandals. Joyce. Well, it is fairyland, right? It is fairyland, indeed. I said a mushroom cap. Oh, isn't that... I told you not to ask her. call on you anymore. <laughs> and neither is anybody else. Now you're ready. You need one to tie, two to win. The nurse said to the surgeon, I like to hear music during an operation. So the surgeon played a tune on the patient's blank. The nurse said to the surgeon, I like to hear music during an operation, so the surgeon played a tune on the patient's blank. <laughs> Will you stop giggling and write an answer now? Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. So the surgeon played a tune on the patient's blank. It wasn't bad. And I executed it all right. Okay. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> Just leave him alone now. <laughs> Come on now. All right, Barbara. The nurse said to the surgeon, I like to hear music during an operation. So the surgeon played a tune on the patient's blank. Barbara! <laughs> you can't think of anything? Intestines. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want to go through with this. <laughs> what do you say, Orson? He blew up his kidney and played I'm Forever Blown Bubbles. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, actually, he gave a quick rendition of the Bells of St. Mary on his backbone. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right, like a xylophone or marimba. Yes, oh, yes indeed, that. yes. What did you say, Brett? Well, I don't know whether we're... I thought of it as before the opening. Yes. You know. Oh. And I said abdomen and or stomach. Now, is that a match? Because once you cut through, you might possibly no, get into the, okay, I'm sorry, that <laughs> match, right, into the intestine. Let's not be too graphic but with this. Uh, Charles, uh, I'm carry very on. glad, Gene, you brought up the marimba and the xylophone mo motif, which was a lovely thing to do, so I chose ribs. Uh, ribs, that would be it. Yeah. That would make music. So the audience likes that. That's a good one. I've got a good one, which I'll tell you about when you've all revealed yours. May we see yours? Before. Yes. My doctor was from the islands, and he played the tom-tom on her tummy. That's, that'd be interesting. That'd be very and good. now I want to leave. Now, Richard, you're up. We all like to sing, actually, of a musical instrument, something that might be inside of the human body. Mm -hmm. So the surgeon played a tune on her intestinal organ. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What is that? Okay. Intestines? Yes, we got oh, a bell for that. that. I should have. Oh, you got so. one. What? Well, yes or no? Yeah. No. Oh, all right. Well, what are they called? I don't know. Didn't now, Joyce, intestines? it's up to you. Well, I. Just... She's looking for the word, uh, the match intestines. Okay, mushroom. And <laughs> if uh, <laughs> she doesn't match you, why oh. the game will be over and Tommy will be the winner. What do you say to that? I was seriously trying to think where you do play tunes on your body. Yeah. And. Um, I thought that, that you have. <laughs> Wait a second. The bells of St. Mary's. The, ba the bell, pi the bagpipes here. <laughs> Only when I was trying to cut my but throat. I, did, I said 
I couldn't think of this it's term in the body. It's called the Adam's body. intestine. Yes, the vocal I cord. I the chin, and I'm in chin. here. Oh, you meant there. I know what you mean, so Tommy Sander wins again. Come on, Congratulations. So, we stand by for a moment or so. Now you're going back to Van Buren, Arkansas, huh? Yeah. Well, all right, give them our regards, will you? Sure How will. much are you taking with you? $2,850. Congratulations to Barbara Denny. Goodbye. Now while we spin her off, we'll spin this message just for you. We are ready. If you are ready, we are ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. This young lady's won her first game. She's got her first hundred dollars. She will try now for over five thousand dollars here. And let's begin. We polled a recent studio audience, Tommy. We got their best response to this. Sugar blank. Now the answer they gave most often is worth five hundred dollars if you match it. If you match the next one, you get two fifty. And the bottom one, a hundred dollars. Whom do you call on? Joyce, please. Joyce. I got a good one, I think. What? Sugar Daddy. Sugar Daddy. Well known phrase. Brett. Brett? Uh, how about, there are a couple, how about Sugar and Spice? Sugar and Spice. Charles. What do you say, Charles? Let's get into the heavyweights. Yeah. Sugar cane. Sugar. <laughs> sugar plum fairy. I mean, I do not, did you say cane or king? Cane. Cane. I did not say sugar plum fairy. No. I said sugar cane. The sugar plum fairy. <laughs> he is the sugar plum fairy. Sugar cane. So we got sugar cane, sugar and spice, and sugar daddy. Do you want one of those, or do you want to give us one of your own? How about sugar daddy? Yeah. Sugar daddy, Joyce's answer. We'll find out if it's up there, and if so, where. Let's begin down at the bottom and reveal the one hundred dollar response. Sugar daddy, right off the bat, you got it. Congratulations to you. All right. I'm curious to see what's under the $250 response. Slide it, Earl. Sugar and spice. Who's your one? Ah, Brett gave you that one. What do you think is under there? The big one. Cane. Okay, go. Cane is right. Okay, now you won the 100. You're up to 200. You're going to play for 10 times that amount now or $1,000. Whom do you call on to match exactly? Charles. Charles, are you ready? Yo. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I love it when you're butch. <laughs> here it is. Tra I can't hear that from here unless you use a more strong masculine okay, voice. Right, here you go. Trap blank. That's T R A P blank. Chuck. Trap blank. Trap blank. Ding. He's finished. Now, Tommy, we need your answer. One you think will match his. Trap blank. Trap door. Trap door. Good answer. We'll find out if it matches him or not. Trap blank for $1,000, Charles. She says trap door will match you. You know, I... <laughs> I actually, for one fleeting moment, thought of the Trap Family Singer. Yeah. Because her dress is very Trap Family Singer-ish. That's right. Right, but when she leaves, she's going to go through the door. Okay. $1,200, Tommy Singer. That's a lot of money for you, and we wish you well. And you're going to play another game now. You ready? Oh, I'm ready. All right, let's meet your new opponent. Here comes Jeanette Crosby. Okay. All right. Got back on. Okay. Hello, Jeanette. Hi. You know this lucky lady, Tommy Singer? I sure do. She's, She's got $1,200, and we wish you well as we ask you to tell us about you. Well, first of all, I guess I'll start with my family. I have a very busy life. I don't, I'm not quite sure whether I live in Oakland or in L.A. I do believe I live on an airplane. Sum that up, I'm a stewardess. I have been married for one year. I have six lovely children. Six? <laughs> six? Did she say six children? Six children and you've been married a year? I demand an explanation. I demand a recount. It's spelled S-E-X, I mean I-X. 
six. What? I don't know what that means, but six whatever it children. says. All right. We wish you well, and we'll start this game. <laughs> Thank you all, you were splendid. Next time we get together, these are the people you will see on this stage. Bill Macy, <laughs> Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Raleigh, Elaine Joyce, Richard Dawson, and Betty White. Gene Rayburn, Match Game 75, join us next time. Goodbye. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game 75, a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production.